How you doing guys? It's Alessandro here from Spicy Moustache with some new tips in order to help you create in your own green area, indoor or outdoor. Plants are really important for the planet and for all living things. Plants absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen from their leaves, which humans and animals need to breathe. However, all land plants have evolved from aquatic ancestors. The oceans cover about the 71% of Earth's surface, yet algae produce roughly the 50% of Earth's oxygen. It's estimated that there are roughly between 30,000 and 1 million different varieties of algae, and they all go from microscopic to gigantic dimensions. Algae are the most important photosynthesizing organism on Earth. They capture more of the sun's energy and they produce more oxygen than all plants combined. They form the foundation of most aquatic food webs, which supports an abundance of animals. So dig up the like button and today I'll show you some tips in order to start growing your own spirulina at home. Given that the biomass of the world's algae is about a tenth of the biomass of all the other plants on Earth, the efficiency of algae is absolutely impressive. The algae have benefited humankind since the earliest day of life on the planet. For example, the blue-green algae changed the atmosphere and triggered the evolution of eukaryotic organisms, including humans. Spirulina is one of the most famous blue-green algae and is believed to be one of the oldest life forms on Earth. First used by the Aztec, spirulina is considered a superfood, an all-in-one source of nutrients, including an amount of protein comparable to eggs. Spirulina is a type of bacteria called cyanobacterium that grows well in salty and fresh water. Similar to plants, it produces energies from sunlight through the photosynthesis process. It grows and thrives in warm water, alkaline ponds and rivers. There has been a lot of research studies on spirulina and their benefits on our body. These algae increase the level of beneficial bacteria in your intestines, which in turn helps to develop more vitamin B6 and boost energies. It has been shown to prevent the release of histamine in our immune system, which means that basically helps to reduce the allergic reactions. It also contains a high amount of antioxidants, which makes it absolutely brilliant among the beauty products. The problem is there is little or no scientific evidence to back up all these benefits. A few assertions have been tested, but most trials have been poorly designed or inconclusive. Spirulina is easily grown in any clear container, like tank, jars or bottles. It needs a source of light, so placing it by a south-facing window could help, or you can light up some LED lights. It needs a little steering every day, so all the fibers can have a turn under the light. The ideal temperature to grow spirulina would be around 27.5 degrees Celsius. However, as close as possible to that temperature, it's absolutely fine. Just make sure to keep it above 16 degrees Celsius or it will start to die. Even if it's around 18 or 25 degrees, it's still gonna thrive, but it's just gonna slow down a tiny bit. Pirulina is known as an extremophile, which means that it thrives in extreme conditions like high alkalinity. You also need to maintain a pH level of 8.5, which you can measure with a pH pen or pH stripes. But the main thing is to maintain it with nutrient fertilizer at all the times. I've got my kit from the Mushroom Lady UK, which comes with all the instructions and also a fertilizer that you can use for your culture. Anyway, I will leave the link to buy this product in the description of this video. So the first step is to add 20 grams of nutrient powder to 900 milliliters of water. Stir well until it's dissolved completely. Once this is done, just add both the nutrient solution and your spirulina inside the container that you decided to use. Then you just need to cover your container with a mesh and secure it with an elastic band. If you're using a bigger container, 
you can just leave a loose lid on the top. Place the container in a well lit and warm spot. I use SF1000 Spider Farmer LED light to provide the correct amount of light to grow my spirulina. To make sure that all the filaments are exposed to light, you just need to stir it every day. This could be done manually with a clean spoon or you can use an air pump. I've got many different kinds of air pumps at home, however I noticed that mixing twice a day works really good. Or potentially, you could connect your air pump to a timer and set it to work for 15 minutes every two hours. Also, you will have a chart coming with your kit with different colors showing the density of your culture. After roughly a week, once the spirulina in your container gets to a green darkish color, it's ready to be harvested. The rule of thumb for your harvest is that you need to add back in the same amount of nutrient powder to the biomass that you extract from your culture. For example, if you extract one teaspoon of biomass, you will have to get back into your culture one teaspoon of nutrient powder. If you are cultivating in a small jar like mine, the easiest way is to transfer the whole content from one jar to the other using a mesh to filter the fibers. For one liter worth, I would advise pouring half a liter through a J cloth to catch all the filament. You can then rinse your biomass in lukewarm water before transferring to a small container. Don't use hot or cold water or you will kill the organisms in your culture. You can then reuse the water that you transfer to the second container and pour it back into the first one as it will still have some nutrients. Once you have your harvest, you can either use it fresh or you can spread it over a mesh and let it dry in the oven at a really low temperature or you can use a dehydrator. Gardeners can use spirulina as a complete effective foliar plant food. Also, if you've got some houseplants, you can sprinkle a bit of this powder around the base of your plant and you can see the difference that that's gonna make to your plant. Organic farmers can use spirulina as a completely natural and healthy fertilizer. However, be careful because it's pretty alkaline, so before using it in your garden, try to source some information. Algae can be found pretty much anywhere where there is light to photosynthesize and water available for reproduction. There are important colonizers in hot springs and lava flows these so-called extremophiles often thriving in extraordinary hot temperatures. If algae exist elsewhere in our solar system, an alga-like organism is the most likely to be found. Growing spirulina at home is really easy and super fun, especially for people that don't have much space and they really want something with low care. I hope you liked today's video and if so please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video. I'll see you next Friday for another episode and thank you so much for watching. See ya!